Hello and welcome everyone to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Rev. Meredith Manning Brown and on behalf of our staff and everyone who's helping to lead worship, we welcome you. We want to say a special shout out to everybody who's celebrating Mother's Day today. If that's what you're doing, we're glad that you're joining with us in online worship. And we want everybody, if they'll take a couple of moments, to fill out our contact form, particularly if this is your first time to join with us in online worship. That contact form is is pinned right in the comment section. There's a place there for you to put all of your contact information. Of course, your email address is key because that's how we can get our e-newsletter to you. And there's also a place there for prayer concerns that go straight to our prayer uh, to our prayer team and to our pastors. So please use that contact form today. We want to be able to connect with you and pray with you and that is the best way to do that. Now when we join together in online worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. When we covenant to participate, that means that we're going to participate in online worship in what we're doing today. So if it's time to pray, pray. If it's time to sing, stand up and sing. Listen carefully, maybe light a candle to help you focus. Uh, turn off other distractions and other devices and getting close to your screen um, and really participate in our worship time together. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that everything we do together is going to bless everyone from the way that we're in the comment section together, the way that we are with people we may be joined with as we're worshiping, with our online community, with everyone extended out into the world, that everything we do today is a blessing. Now, uh, as we come into this time of worship, I invite you to join me in a time of centering as we are led in some music by our handbell choir. And again, welcome to worship. right now. For God does amazing things. Sing to God a new song. For God does amazing things. Make a joyful noise to God all the earth. For God does amazing things. Break into a joyful song. For God does amazing things. Please join us in singing Life Song.
Josie Kumach. I'm Trisha Kumach, and we attend BAUMC. Please join us in our spirit of prayer as we pray aloud in our opening prayer. God of songs and marvels, old and new, your powerful love for this world continues to astound us. In these last days of Easter, we remember the love that brought Jesus into this world and into our lives as a Savior, friend, and brother. You teach us to abide in his generous love, for it completes our lives and gives us joy. You ask us to love others as you have loved us, for it brings your creation to full life. But we struggle to love the people in our lives as you have loved us. Forgive us, we pray, and teach us your love again. Help us welcome and love you as you do. Amen. Amen. Receive this assurance. Long ago, Jesus said to his disciples, I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from God. You did not choose me, but I choose you. Jesus speaks these words to us today. Jesus loves us, forgives us, and chooses us to be his friends, sharing his great work of love. Hallelujah. Please share that same love and forgiveness and peace with one another, saying peace be with you and responding and also with you. You can do that in the comment section. Of course, you can do that with people you may be gathered with. You can share that peace with me. Peace be with you. Hello, I'm Tammy Schroeder and I play with the bell choir and peace be with you. And also with you, I'm Julie Crable. I'm a member of the Bell Choir. I'm on the Staff Parish Committee. I'm on the board with Wouldn't It Be Lovely? Peace be with you. And also with you. Hi, I'm Jesse Kleinschmidt. I'm the new office administrator here at Douglas Avenue. I look forward to meeting all of you. And peace be with you. I'm so excited. It's time for small talk. I want to encourage all the children who are joining with us in online worship to get in really close to your device, to your screen, so that you can see and hear everything that's going on with small talk. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our director of children and youth ministries, and Laud the Lamb, her assistant. So come in really close right now for small talk. Good morning, everyone. I am Miss Lori. This is Laud the Lamb. And today, I would like to talk to you about moms. Now, before I became a mom, I used to carry a purse like this. Mm -hmm. But now that I am a mom, I carry a purse that looks like this. One of the great mysteries of the world is what is in a mom's purse. Mm -hmm. So we're going to explore what is in this purse. No, not everything. We're not gonna take everything out of the purse. That would be, no. Okay, we have a calendar. Clearly, moms have to stay on top of things. Um, what else is in here, Laud? We have, oh, a book. I spend a lot of time just waiting right now. I drive places and then I wait places. So I have a book that I'm reading. Mm -hmm. No, no, you cannot have that. But yes, a snack. Somebody might get hungry. Um, oh, an EpiPen. Somebody's allergic to bees. Need this. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, sunscreen. Have to have sunscreen. Um, let's see. Oh, phone. Can't go anywhere without the phone. Um, masks. More masks. Oh, wait. Another mask. Yeah. Excedrin migraine. Lipstick, Kleenex, tears, and colds and allergies. Oh, oh yeah, car key, 
kind of goes along with the book and the waiting and the the things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, car key. Um. Oh look, more masks. Um. More keys to other things. And there's a wallet in here and a a checkbook. The end. Oh. Well, I'm getting there. I'm getting it. Gum. Lens cleaners. Mm. Now, what I'm about to pull out, I don't carry with me every day, but I probably should. Mm hmm A holy Bible. Right? Not only is it a guide, to life, but it's the best guide for motherhood. Mm -hmm. It's also the best good for kidhood, right? For all you kiddos out there, everything you need to know is in here, right? Even, especially for today, honoring thy father and thy mother. It's one of God's top 10. Okay, yeah, mom's top 10 might be, you know, clean your room, eat your vegetables, take a bath, comb your hair, take out the trash, read your Bible. But one of God's top 10 is honor your mother. So keep that in mind today and maybe do some of mom's top 10s too today. Clean something. Take out the trash. Give her a big hug and say, I love you. Yeah. Love you guys and happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Douglas Avenue, hey, Kevin here, riding shotgun with all you good looking peeps. So come on with me, come on, open your Bibles. Let's go to John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. Let's open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I've said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one is greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. Love. Love is a word we use a lot. We sure use it a lot together at church. Almost every song we sing together in worship at least mentions love in passing, if not totally focuses in on love one way or another. Certainly the bread and butter of popular music is love. Wanting love, lost love, longing for love, fleeting love, trampled on love, using and abusing love, sometimes very rarely, love that lasts. We also love a new restaurant, love a pair of shoes, love our phone, love our RV, love our children, love an idea, love God, love the weekend. The word love is used so much that the meaning of love is often lost for us. Love gets talked about as just being a feeling an emotion, something that you have no control over, an interest or passion that comes and goes, sometimes on a whim. But Jesus' understanding and expressions of love are all about staying power, love that grows, lasts, lives, and works beyond ourselves. 
Jesus expresses this early on in chapter 15 of John's Gospel, which we read and talked about last week. Jesus says, abide in me as I abide in you, or live in me as I live in you, or you in me and I in you. Discovering and working out the meaning of you in me and I in you is the stuff of the Christian life. It's what Christians are about. It's what the fruit of Christian living grows from. And it is where true love lives and is lived out in the world. You in me and I in you is the basis for what Jesus goes on to describe as the changes that will happen to us in the community of faith, in his body, that is rooted and growing in Jesus, like a vine with growing fruitful branches. Then Jesus just lays it out there for us. He says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Period. As people who love and follow Jesus, who are receiving Jesus' life in us and are living in him, this is the time to really perk up and pay close attention. Because this command to love is not sounding particularly optional. Jesus repeats the command several times just to make sure we get it. Love one another as I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. That's it. The heart of it, the command, all stop. Love one another as I have loved you. Jesus commands us to love. How do you do that? How do you command love? How can Jesus actually command, not ask, advise, recommend, or strongly recommend, but command that we love? This commanding to love makes many people uncomfortable, particularly if you go with the popular idea that love is an emotion, a feeling. Then you either love someone or you don't. And if you don't like them, you certainly can't love them. When I was a teenager, I fell in and out of love on a regular basis. When I was a young adult and had more serious relationships, I used to go through a phase that I called being in serious like with someone. In these romantic relationships, being in serious like came long before being in serious love. I remember very clearly telling my mom I was in serious like with my then friend, Curtis Brown, long before I was ready to talk about feeling in love with a person who's now been my husband of 26 years. But Jesus seems to have something else going on here. Jesus is telling us to love, directing us to love, commanding us to love. Jesus puts this to us as a command because this love, God's love, is in a very real way a decision. Not a decision to move from serious like to love or a command to feel love. Rather, this command to love is a decision to act for the benefit of someone else no matter how you feel about him or her. Love is a decision to be kind, gracious, considerate, helpful, firm, giving, receiving, or whatever will minister to someone else's benefit, no matter your feelings. This is the love that Jesus commands us to do. It's an active, demonstrable, tangible giving of the love that Jesus has for us. And it is a decision that we make to love as Jesus has loved us. Now, I know that sounds a bit dry and without any joy or delight or fun, but the command to love is not all that Jesus gives us here. Love one another is not simply a law that is demanded of us. Jesus also says there is a deep joy involved, that he has said these things to us so that his joy may be in us and that our joy may be complete. There is power, strength, deep joy, and infinite resource provided to us with this command to love. And that is Jesus' love for us. Jesus loves us, loves you, 
loves me, no matter what kind of mood we're in and no matter how we treat him. If you have any question about that, think about how difficult it must have been at times for Jesus to love those disciples of his. Like us, they could be stubborn. They could be quarrelsome, selfish, ambitious, presumptuous. They insulted, ignored, and disobeyed Jesus. Much of the time, they did not seem to understand the message Jesus was telling him. Sometimes it seems like they chose not to understand him on purpose. Can I get a shout out from any of the parents out there? Yeah. They often showed their own doubts about being loved through their actions of jealousy or pettiness or fear. And Jesus did not automatically always feel love for them either. On several occasions, Jesus in exasperation proclaimed, how long must I be with you? Or how long must I put up with you? Get another shout out to the parents out there? Yeah. So, how did Jesus do it? I believe the key is found in Jesus' words in verse 9 of our scripture reading today. As the Father has loved me, so I love you. Love flows much more freely from the heart and soul that is conscious of being loved. Love flows much more naturally from the heart and soul that is surrounded in love. When the disciples were being particularly unlovable, Jesus didn't just grit his teeth and try to be nice. He spent time reflecting on how God loved him, found strength in the knowledge that he was cherished by God. He went out on the hillsides at times to pray and renew himself in this love. Then he would come back and, through abiding love, re-engage his disciples, re-engage their follies, even stupidity, even their hurtfulness, even destructiveness of the folks who surrounded him. And he loved them. This is the strength, power, and source of our ability to love others. It is because Jesus loves us. This is why you can make a decision to love. Because no matter who you are, what you've done, how stubborn or petty or hurtful you have been, how damaged or irredeemable you may believe yourself to be, Jesus loves you. This is evident not only because of Jesus' death on the cross, but also in the living, active, supporting love that Jesus shows you and me each day. It is the sacred, deep, indwelling reality of God's love from which love flows. And when we forget this, we are gifted with church community, friends, support, faith-filled counsel, worship, prayer, and conversation, the overwhelming work of the Holy Spirit to help us remember this powerful, indwelling love each and every day. Loving others is acting out that love in our lives. The kind of love Jesus is talking about is manifested in deeds and is summed up in Jesus' words, no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. We know the examples, the stories of people who have lived out this sacrificial love and died in the process, from the missionary fields to the battlefield, from social service to neighborhood to schoolyard to home. You can't go further than that, and that's Jesus' point. You can't go further in enacting love than to die showing that love. It's what Jesus did for us. But I don't believe Jesus is advocating you getting killed. If that is what Jesus meant, then you can, well, really only do that once, and then you're done. And for some people, that may very well be what they are called to do. However, there are many ways to lay down your life. Because at, it, at its core, what it means to lay down your life is to give of yourself to take your life and give it on behalf of someone else, risking your treasure and risking your reputation. Take a moment to consider the ways you are already extending yourself in this way, giving yourself on behalf of others. How is it that you are already practicing this love that Jesus has commanded? And now consider the next step. 
How is Jesus calling you to give yourself further or next or to get started in giving of your life on behalf of others? Is it having that conversation to forgive or seek forgiveness? Is it joining and volunteering that you haven't yet done? Is it giving of your finances, not just from the leftovers, but in a sacrificial way? Or similarly, of your time, not just if you have some leftover time, but changing the way you spend your time so that you can? Is it stopping a hurtful habit and exchanging it for a life-giving one? Is it taking that next step in engaging in anti-racism work? Or risking your reputation by talking with your friends about why they need to be vaccinated, listening to their fears, and providing counsel, referrals, or supportive accompaniment to medical professionals? How are you being called to that sacrificial giving? My friends, Jesus promises to be with us, that we are his friends in this. And as his friends, we are to love one another as he has loved us. Let's trust him in that, believe him in that, and take that next step of love in action. Amen. Join us as we sing, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Nancy Vereen, would you please join me in prayer? Dear God, today we gather together to give you thanks for our many blessings. On this special day set aside to honor mothers and all women who nurture others, we ask for a special touch from the Lord for each and every one of them. May each one be granted a special blessing and may the work of her hands not be forgotten in your sight. Let her example be a guiding force to all of those that she nurtures, and may her wisdom be passed down. Your commandment teaches us that we should love one another as you love each of us. We give thanks for the love of this wonderful congregation. What a blessing it was last weekend to be able to gather with our friends, many of which we haven't been able to see in so long to celebrate the graduation of our Wibble Associates, Malia, Brooke, Alexis, and Tammy. We pray that their futures will be bright and filled with joy. We give prayers of thanksgiving for the many years of dedicated service of Carol, our church office administrator. It was wonderful to share with friends and former pastors. 
We pray that you will be with Jesse as he steps into Phil Carroll's position. Give him knowledge and patience as he moves forward. Dear God, we ask that you will watch over our leaders and that they will make wise decisions for all of us. Be with those people who struggle with illness, poverty, loneliness, loss of relationships, or any situations in which they are struggling. As we start a new week, we ask that you walk with us. Help us to make wise decisions and to love and show kindness to each other. Would you please join me as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Giving of our time, of our financial gifts, is one of those big ways that we extend ourselves in sacrificial love and giving to the world. And I want to thank you for the way that you have been giving your finances, your time, into the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. That kind of sacrificial giving makes it possible for us to be able to be in ministry in powerful ways right here at home and extended throughout the world. So thank you. You can give your financial financial gifts using our online giving portal. The link to that is pinned right in the comment section. It's also available on our web page. You can give by set up, setting up automatic giving with our financial institution or with yours. If you need help with that, just give us a call in the church office. And of course, you can send in your, church, your checks to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Thank you for all the ways that you've been giving. And of course, I wanna offer up these opportunities for you to give yourself into the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church to connect up that faith and living. Our next community garden work day is this Saturday, May 15th from 9 a.m. to noon. Join with folks throughout our community, whether you're a gardener or not, as we continue cleanup and box repair and spreading mulch right in our community garden at the uh, DAUMC facility. Don't forget your face covering, your work gloves, any gardening tools that you might need, join with us. Our next session of Vital Conversations on Race is coming up on Monday, May 24th at 6.30 p.m. On your own, watch part one and two of the documentary, The Black Church, available on PBS, and then participate in our online small group discussion, learning and prayer with Vital Conversations. As we seek to understand and dismantle systems of racism through continuing education, advocacy, and lifestyle changes. Plans are underway for the annual fundraising bike ride to support his home orphanage in Haiti. Participants who are interested in joining in the bike ride uh, that's happening in mid-June are encouraged to check out all the information in our e-newsletter or contact Kathy Lambden through the church office. Riders are going to need to register by June 7th and we'll have more information available soon about how everyone can support this effort with their prayers and financial gifts. And then we want you to mark your calendars now for this summer's Family Vacation Bible School, Celebrating God's Creation Family Camp. That's for kids and people of all ages, Monday, June 21st through Thursday, June 24th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. It's gonna be an outdoor, fun, in-person experience with music, story, and activity. So mark your calendar now. I want to encourage you again to fill out your contact form and in particular, make sure that you put your email address in there. Our e-newsletter is the best way to know about all of these ways that you connect can connect your faith into ministry and into living that out in your life. So please use that and thank you. Please join us in Hymn of Promise. Mm -hmm.
Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It has been a joy to have this time with you, and I pray that this experience has been meaningful and uplifting and powerful for you, that our time together here is helping you grow in your faith and in your sacrificial life and love and giving in our world. I want to encourage you again to use that contact form to fill in that information there and remember to put your prayer needs uh, in that form that goes straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. We love to be able to pray with you, to connect with you. So please use that contact form so that we can connect with you. And now as you go into your day, Go knowing that God loves you completely, that Jesus calls you friend, and that the Holy Spirit inspires and empowers you for sacrificial, life-giving love and service in our world. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.